Well, it's 7.30 uh, since we will go ahead with our um, start of our work session. I'll turn it over to the city manager and introduce our first group they will be speaking. All right. Uh, I believe the council is well aware of uh, the work of the Youth Advisory Board. And so we asked them to come in and uh, give us an annual report. And uh, no surprise, uh, Manisha is, uh, is the lead department for that group. So I'll turn it over to Manisha. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. That's quite all right. We're still waiting on some of the young We can sure do that. So we, this is Manisha Morning. Uh, the other topic is Engage DSM. And you'll recall that from Bridging the Gap work, uh, we, we wanted to establish a uh, uh, academy for our citizens, our residents, to be able to participate in, to get to uh, better understand uh, Des Moines, City of Des Moines services, uh, where the opportunities are to connect, and then hopefully at some point even uh, potentially put their name in for boards and commissions uh, to be appointed. So uh, we're trying to cover a lot of bases with this new program. And I wanted to give you an update on that. So, thank you, Scott. Good morning, Mayor and members of City Council and members of the public. My name is Manisha Bottle. I'm the equity officer for the city. I am also currently serving as the acting director for the city, uh, city's civil and human rights department. And um, some of you, or most of you may recall um, a presentation a few years ago about the Engaged DSM program, which is the Residence Academy program. Several communities around the country have um, a learning opportunity for our residents um, about the city's operation, services and programs, and then um, ways for them to engage with their local government. So this is our attempt at offering a program of this nature. We've done this. Today's update is going to be an update on the pilot cohorts. We had two cohorts of um, our pilot program just to see the feasibility of it to ensure that we can improve um, and make the program more um, relevant to our community and to our residents and about our operations. So, as Scott mentioned, Engage DSM is um, a program that was one of the recommendations of Bridging the Gap um, initiative several years ago. Um, it really is the first-hand experience and behind-the-scenes knowledge for our residents about city's operations. Um, anywhere from, you know, there's a lot of public-facing departments, but this is an opportunity for residents to also learn about those departments that are not necessarily public-facing. Um, meaningfully engaged residents, informed residents, builds, builds civic infrastructure, which is always a benefit to our community and to any community. So there, the impact of this program is informed residents, informed decision making from residents' behalf, and also um, inquiries and questions that residents may have. Um, sometimes those are answered directly um, by participating in a program like this and then word of mouth, um, you know, as they share with their neighbors and with their community um, friends and, and family members. As mentioned, this is um, the Bridging the Gap uh, recommendation. Um, the the intent really is to build that strong connection between our communities um, and community groups and the city. And um, it's not necessarily a dialogue where residents are asking questions and engaging in conversations with the city staff. It really is an opportunity for them to ask questions as, where does you know, my tax dollars go? Or um, you know, what does the budget look like for this specific department? I had no idea that city clerk's office did you know, 90% more than what I thought they did. Um, so I'm just saying city clerk, because Laura's sitting right there. Um, just from the pilot that has, the impact is already um, looking like that. You know, we were realistic in expecting that from our community members. Um, the process was really initially, we started with the program concept. We had meetings with all of our departments and the department directors. Um, we created a task force of internal city staff to ensure that this wasn't just a one department or one individual-led effort. You will see the names of individuals that participated um, in the task force. I should also mention that Lisa Krebs from Neighborhood Services also was um, involved in the task force in its first um, year. Then uh, we shared about the content expect 
expectations and communications office. So thanks to our um, public information office for helping us with the, um, not just the design and the look of it, but also creating the streamlined process for us to ensure that um, the content looked uh, very, oh, content looked very um, um, seamless. And then we did the first round of pilot cohort, which is for our city staff. We made some improvements based on their recommendations. Then we did the second pilot. Um, typically, there's only one pilot, but in this case, we wanted a second cohort, which involved our board and commission members. And we made, uh, we're, we're actually in the process of now making improvements based on their feedback. And then we will do a public launch. This is the program structure. There will always be an application process. We want to make sure who's signing up. We want to make sure that they're Des Moines residents um, and that they identify reason for participating in a program like that, um, that they don't utilize an opportunity like this to just um, share their comments and feedback on the city, but also have an interest in learning about um, us as an organization and uh, municipal government. So far, it's a six-week program. That seems to be more ideal. Um, there are some communities that offer a 10-week program. Um, both Malcolm, Malcolm and I have worked in communities that have an exact same program, and those vary between eight um, weeks and 10 weeks. So far, we're offering two and a half hours per week, um, which, based on the feedback, they've said that's, very, that's not enough time. Um, we thought that was a lot of time that we're expecting from the community, but they said that it just goes by really fast. We do a pre-program evaluation and a post-program evaluation to make sure that we understand if there was any um, change in their learning uh, based on this program. And then um, there's also a feedback opportunity for residents for specific departments and also specific uh, for the entire program. And the feedback isn't about change the entire service that you offer or change this policy. It's more so, hey, you know, we recommend that in our neighborhood, our meetings are held at this hour. This is when the residents really come together um, for a conversation or for an event. This might be a good opportunity for you to do an input session instead of what's been planned so far. So the feedback can be about operations based on residents and their experience in their community and in their neighborhood. And then the overall program feedback is about the Engage DSM as a program. Presentation includes department services, staffing, and budget. Budget is always a question, and then once they see a chart or um, list of operations, there seems to be a, an understanding of, okay, I see where these dollars go. Impact on Des Moines. To, there's always um, either a tour or an activity um, so that they have a, an understanding of what it's like to be in that department or operate as a staff in that department for 15 minutes, and then learn about engagement oppor opportunities, whether it's to join a board or a commission, or to participate in any other committee or um, public input sessions that may be coming up for that department. So the impact on Des Moines piece, I wanted to make sure that you saw that. Um, it, every presentation will um, ask for a department to um, identify and connect their department's operations to council goals and priorities, so that there's always that connection to your goals and your priorities um, from the operation of, of, of each department. So they briefly mention how their department's goals and priorities connect to your goals. Um, they talk about their core services and reiterate that these are core services, not a list of everything that they do, um, because departments are really given 30 to 40 minutes to present. And then talk about the current projects. And with the boards and commissions, this looks like it was one of the exciting things for them was to learn about what engineering department was doing, um, what parks department was doing, because they got to learn about you know, some of the planned projects, um, and there were questions on that as well. Okay, these are the pilot cohorts. Just a few photos that we took, the city staff pilot. We did a kind of a, you know, test at the graduation and what that would be like. There's a certificate that they get. Um, staff members shared that uh, this was really an opportunity for them to learn as well, um, even as city staff. Some of them that have been here for multiple years um, they appreciated the opportunity to learn about other departments. Um, and then the board and commission pilot, they participated um, both you know, as like a quasi um, you know, city entity, city group, and, but also res from the residents' perspective. So they, their input was um, very, very um, valuable um, because they shared that you know, the way you present is probably not going to work well for 
um, our residents or for my neighbors. So maybe change the language or change the, the bullet points. So that was very helpful in their feedback. Um, and without doing this, we would have just launched the program and then made significant changes throughout the process. So piloting was, a, was, was very helpful. These are some of the feedbacks, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend just a, a few uh, moments here on, the, on, this, on this slide. So the pre and post is what you see on the right side in the blue bar graph. How informed do you feel about the City of Des Moines and its operations, program services it offers? And mind you, these are board and commission members, about 10 to 12 individuals, and even they felt that they were more informed after participating in this program. So imagine residents that may not already know about a lot of our operations and what that would look like. So hopefully, every time we have this program offered in the community, we'll be able to do this and, and look at the difference um, and look at um, the, the impact of the program. Um, some of the quotes. If I didn't work here, I would love to join a board or commission. Would highly recommend to curious people. I feel better able to find answers as the academy continues and there are alumni. Some follow-up events would be interesting for them to, to get together and really uh, know their neighbors or no neighbors or, uh, board and or community neighborhood association members from across town. Um, so that was something that one of the participants mentioned was um, she would like to meet um, their neighborhood association members from another part of Des Moines. I feel like this was a valuable experience that all city employees should get to partake in. And this came from an employee, perhaps offering these presentations as lunch and learns. These are very public facing departments, yet I feel like I learned so much from them. It highlights the great work we do and work that we still need to communicate these services to the public. That's all I have about Engage DSM and the impact. Um, I'm more than happy to share more um, about the, the next steps and if you have any questions. Sure. What we plan. Yes. So the next steps would be for us to um, look at the feedback that we received from the, the pilot cohort and then make changes and improvements um, and then offer it to the public. We would like to have no more than 25 individuals in each cohort um, when it's launched for the public. Um, even 25 feels like a lot, but that has been sort of the number that other communities have. Um, and then the, the only um, sort of um, or caveat here is that it is, um, you know, how do we advertise it, right? What if we get 50 applicants and then we can only have 25 individuals in, in each cohort? Do we ask them to wait for another six months? Do we launch two at the same time? So we haven't figured out that yet, but basically we would like to launch it in the next um, couple months for the community members to participate. Um, one of our intended groups um, right off the bat is obviously neighborhood association members. That was um, highly recommended. Um, from the participants, and I know some of the council members mentioned that several years ago as well to reach out to the neighborhood associations for that. And then it's also going to be offered to the general public so that they get connected with the neighborhood association and their members. So. Any other question? <laughs> we'll do it to help during the next period. Once we have the content and the program ready for the public lunch, launch, um, I would appreciate your help in reaching out to neighborhood association, um, your constituents to, sign, uh, to apply, to fill out the application. The application is very simple. Um, again, we may get more than, <clears throat> based on the feedback we've received, uh, we may have more than 25 individuals wanting to sign up. So would appreciate your help in reaching out to those that you know would not only be interested but would benefit from learning about um, this program. One of the comments made by um, uh, uh, the board and commission participants was they said, oh, people will stop complaining as much as they do now if once they learn about the city operations um, because a lot of negative feedback comes from not knowing. Um, and so once they know, that maybe reduces it was a direct um, feedback from one of the participants. So we also want you to um, you know, connect us with those that you know could benefit from learning about city's operations. Thank you for asking that question.
All right. So as as you know, the Youth Advisory Board has been Laura okay. has um, they sort of relaunched just a year and a half ago, um, and some of the members that are sitting um, here behind me um, were part of the Youth Advisory Board task force that were involved in um, recreation of the Youth Advisory Board. They um, they worked on the, the language uh, changes in the ordinance, so really huge kudos to these young people that are s still in school um, making time and evenings and um, really being passionate about this community being better, not just for them, but for their friends and um, those that are younger than them. And um, Elijah Williams, who couldn't be here, is an intern in the equity office who has been um, a support um, for, for them and their work as well. So. Um, it's, I, I, can't, I can't stand here and not thank um, Eli as well as members of, and these are not all the members of the Youth Advisory Board that are here um, with um, so much passion and so much love for this community. And again, I could sit here and talk about that for 30 minutes because I truly feel that they, um, them showing up and the way they talk, the way that they've appreciated being a part of this board um, has been very meaningful. And I'm, I'm very thankful that I actually get to work with them um, so, I won't be talking a whole lot. I'm going to invite um, Natalia, who's our vice chair on the board, uh, Youth Advisory Board. Um, our chair, Hadley Harvey, actually is um, got uh, stranded. She was traveling back, and her flight got canceled last night. So she s shares her regrets for not being here. She said um, she asked us to share with you all that she's very appreciative, personally, to be a part of this board um, as a young person in this community. So. Um, sort of passing her regards and, um, you know, and the fact that she couldn't be here with you all, so regrets and regards both. With that, I'm going to invite Natalia to come up here, introduce herself, introduce her peers as, um, you know, multiple of them will come and present to you like they have always done um, in the past. Hello and good morning. First off, I would like to say thank you all for having me here today. And as Manisha said, that Hadley sends her best regards. But she also wanted me to specifically say that she is very proud of all of the hard work our board has accomplished and will continue to do so. And moreover, so uh, moving on to our overview. Um, oh, I got it. <laughs> well, here was, here was our picture from our last year's annual report. We look pretty good. <laughs> um, and so the overview of our board, um, the YAP uh, communicates with the city department board's commission about issues regarding Des Moines youth. So we like to provide a very transparent communication towards them so that we can gain the support that we find that is necessary. And our YAB also works with local agencies when we find that it is crucial to do so in order to provide services to youth and to, prov uh, and to inform youth on certain service providers. Because we find that a lot of our youth uh, d d doesn't have enough information about the service providers that are out there in our community. So we find it deemable to uh, provide that information for our, the youth. And then we also... Um, Thirdly, our board lead takes on responsibility to manage all programs organized by the board. And then the ordinance also guides the Youth Advisory Board to work together to present an annual report August, in August each year to inform public of our work, progress, accomplishments, and communication to inform our public on decisions, um, who we communicate with, and just a little insight to what our board is about. And now I would like to introduce Alante Groves to the podium to talk about our board's purpose. Thank you. All right, good morning, City Council. Thank you. My name is Alante Gross. Thank you for having me here today. So our history of the Des Moines Youth Advisory Board so it was established July 18th in 2005. And after several years of inactivity, the um, Youth Advisory Board Tax Force was created in late 2021 to start up the Youth Advisory Board once again. 
And when thinking about the restarting of the Youth Advisory Board, it makes me think of this quote saying, imagine not being at the table, but imagine building the table. And this board is a prime example of building the table, inviting other youth to come join us and start what was once previously started. So our overall purpose for the board is, um, overall purpose for the board is to create a more suitable and welcoming environment for the youth. Some way we do that is advocating for youth on issues that we see in Des Moines. As youth, we notice that there are a lot of barriers that people like us face, and we wanna help break down some of those barriers. Some, so ways we do that is advocating for the youth, amplifying and uplifting youth voices so that they feel like they have an impact and that they feel like they're being heard here in the city of Des Moines. Now a little bit about our meeting info. So our meetings take place at the Municipal Center on MLK. We meet every second Tuesday of the month and the meetings is where all the magic happens. It's the best part of the month. Bright ideas come to life. And while doing so, we enjoy some good food. You know, Dom we enjoy some Domino's pizza, which keeps the brain working hard. And I strongly urge you to come to a meeting because, I mean, just seeing intelligent students come together and put all their work to, forward and just cooperate to, in order to bring better, bring change to the city, it's just, it's amazing, and words can only describe how honored I am to be a part of this board. So whenever you guys are free and have a chance, we would love for you guys to come join us at a meeting. And now I would like to um, introduce part of episode. Hello, my name is Pardes Mohammed. Thank you for having me. I'm going to speak a little bit about our previous work and what we kind of presented on at our last annual report. So in the 2022-2023 term, um, we held a series of community dialogues to really just address issues and kind of create solutions. We did this so that we can get like uh, community engagement and just hear other youth's voices when speaking about these issues and how to um, overcome them. So to advertise this, we created flyers and really just put our best work into getting as many youth perspectives um, to create these solutions. So here are the five uh, community dialogues that we held and the topics that we introduced, as well as the bullet points that go into like the um, solutions that we had or the next steps that we wanted to uh, bring. So we had visibility and engagement with Des Moines youth, fairness in the juvenile justice system, houselessness, belonging, and economic opportunities. This translated directly into the committees that we will be speaking about, um, where we just came together and decided what was what we needed to prioritize um, in our next term. Now I'd like to welcome Akaya. Hello, I'm Akaya Lee. I'll talk a little bit about our committees. So this past term, 23 to 24, we decided to break off into four committees, the Beautification Committee, the Second Chance Program Committee, the Apprenticeship Program Committee, and then there's one more, I can't remember it. <laughs> and that was basically just to focus more on different areas that we could better benefit youth. And then I was the lead of the Beautification Committee. Um, I'd like to start off by explaining where that idea first began for the Beautification Committee. The idea of the Beautification Committee first started back a year ago while the Youth Advisory Board was holding community conversations. During one of the conversations, it was noted how there was a lack of free spaces for youth to spend their time freely. From that, we got the idea to form this committee to help create more safe spaces throughout the city of Des Moines intended for youth. As a committee, we were able to brainstorm many ideas to reflect that overarching goal. Some of those which were to add more decorated benches and shelter structures at bus stops, add more trash cans downtown, identify areas that needed sidewalks, start painting a mural, work with businesses to hang lights along streets and alleyways downtown. And one of our long-term goals was to create community park and garden on an abandoned or rundown parking lot. 
That being said, the committee has yet to reach these goals due to having infrequent meetings as our members had like conflicted schedules. It was hard for us to meet at, at times. And as well, sometimes gathering, gathering logistical information such as um, maps of all of the bus stops downtown was more difficult. Along with that, recently we have discussed plans to collaborate with City of Des Moines departments to add murals along bike trails throughout the City of Des Moines, which aligns well with the community's envisioned objectives. By partnering with various departments and organizations within the city, we can better establish ourselves as a committee and advance our vision through concrete actions to better communities for the youth of Des Moines. That's all I have. Do you guys have any questions? Next we have, I think, hey y'all and Denise and they'll tell you about our resource fair. Hello, my name is Kayat Yimmer. I'm a senior at Roosevelt High School. Um, so for um, our committee, the Resource Fair Committee, um, we as a board acknowledge that um, there's youth in Des Moines that, you re that are available um, to youth. However, a lot of them, a lot of youth do not, are not aware of these resources. And um, despite these available resources, they're unable to take advantage of them. Thus, we decided to partner with existing businesses, organizations, and communities to host a resource fair um, to get these youth connected to the resources that we deserve. And Nanise should be here right now to tell you guys more about our goals and recommendations. Hello everyone. So we've had an amazing resource fair, but we're not stopping here. We've had some exciting plans to take over youth programming and resources to the next level. So let's dive into these recommendations. I wanna start off by mentioning that collaboration is key. We're going to continue to work closely with more youth focused organizations and Des Moines public schools. I imagine the power of teaming up with counselors and community school coordinators. Working closely with the community can really amplify our impact. By building stronger relationships within D the DMPS community, we can, we can ensure that youth know about our events and resources. This means more support and development opportunities for every young person in Des Moines. And here's where it really gets fun. We're ramping up our social media. Expect to see more of us on Instagram posts and Instagram reels, engaging the community online and offline as well. More posts, more events, and more ways for you to get involved. So look forward to seeing more of us. Moving on to the next event. Oh, am I supposed to click? Okay, apprenticeship program. Good morning, my name is Trey Jackson. Thank you, Mayor Bozen, members of the City Council. Um, I'm the chair of the, uh, print, or the um, Second Chance Program Committee through the uh, Youth Advisory Board of the City of Des Moines. When we got on this board and we kind of came together to discuss what committees we wanted to start, one that was really important to me was one that focused on youth recidivism, uh, especially within the City of Des Moines. I would say that it's one of the biggest challenges that we face as a city, as a state, as the United States, is that we see this, we see this cycle of a continuous um, entrance into the juvenile system where youth will go in, they don't have the resources that they need in the system, and they end up coming out exactly the same without the resources to be successful, and thus they go right back in. I was introduced to the Second Chance program, which is a program offered through uh, Des Moines Police Department that was basically put in place to stop this, right? To implement itself within this cycle and stop it at the source. I came across a lot of challenges, and, and this subcommittee within the Youth Advisory Board came across a lot of challenges. And the first one that I'll point out is that 
there was a lot of kind of shroudness about this um, program. It was really difficult to figure out just what this program was, where the resources were coming from, wh who were the staff members in charge. Um, and I think that that really comes from a lack of devoted resources to this program. And I can understand why our, our you know, police department has a lot of things to do, but I think that this is a really important program that should have some big resources devoted to it, or at least some to allow the program to continue. One of the concerns that we found out is that this program isn't necessarily new even to the city. We had this program actually a few years back, and because of the lack of resources, um, principally, it actually went under and now is back up. So this is actually the second iteration. Um, what this board and the committee found is that we really want this to continue. We don't want what had happened to the last iteration to happen to this one. And so that brings us to our recommendations. The first recommendation that we had uh, focuses on funding. Um, we weren't able to nail down an exact number of what city resources are going to this program, but evidently it's not enough. Um, and so we're hoping that with a funding increase, you can hire at least one to two devoted staff members where this is their goal. They are working on this program specifically, not spread across three different programs, but this program. The next part of this is the upkeep as well. So this is still under the funding bullet where we're making sure that this upkeep is going to continue, right? I mentioned how this is the second iteration. We wanna make sure whatever had the first iteration fall will be able to maintain the second one. The next piece is the offense compatibility piece that I wanted to discuss. So currently there's a, a short list of um, offenses that are, that are allowed under the second chance program. So if you commit that offense and it's under the uh, criteria, the requirement for the program, um, a youth is able to continue. One of the things that we found is that most of these are you know, simple misdemeanors, things like that. Um, we don't believe those to be um, fully representative of some of the common um, offenses that youth get into the juvenile system in the first place. So with our discussions with some of the people within the program, with some people uh, within D uh, DMPD, we found uh, or we recommend the following offenses to be added to the second chance program. Possession with an intent to distribute, burglary in the third degree, and operation of a motor vehicle without the owner's consent. We think that the addition of these offenses would provide um, some additional wide-reaching um, offenses to allow youth to get out of that system. The last recommendation that we have is a restitution fund, and this to me is probably the most fascinating of all the recommendations that this committee came up with. During our discussions, we learned that there is no restitution fund. So unfortunately, we have youth that are going into this system and coming out even through this anti-recidivism program essentially the same, right? They, they don't have the resources to pay restitution. They certainly don't have the resources to pay for a juvenile attorney, right? So they have a public defender. And I mean, let's face it, the people who are going into this juvenile system who are the most uh, at risk aren't the people with the money to pay large sums of restitution. So they're coming out just as resourceless as they came in. So we recommend the addition of a restitution fund to this program so we can provide some restitution or at least some relief to the youth that are going into this system. Um, lastly, I wanna also discuss some of our public engagement opportunities that this board, uh, that this board uh, conducted. Um, specifically, I, I actually wanna talk about the picture that's all the way to the right of your screen. This was our youth simulation and this also came out with some really fascinating results. Um, essentially what we did is we invited different people from across the city um, business leaders, things like that, uh, to engage in a simulation where they were uh, youth in the city of Des Moines. And I was a little bit unsure about it myself, kind of coming out of this. I was like, I don't know, we all have some really different experiences. I know my experience is going to be different than all the other members of the board. And we came out, we had this discussion, and they said, wow, it, it really is difficult, which was, I will say, somewhat liberating to hear from some business leaders and, and community members. They came out of it thinking that there are a lot of programs, but they still have a lot of difficulty. And so it gave us as a board a lot of guidance on how to work um, in terms of the future and what to do next. Uh, with that, I'm going to invite our vice chair back up to discuss some more with you.
we do have another recommendation that we don't want you guys to miss out on. So a apprenticeship program was developed because um, the committee was developed because we um, we felt like there was a lack of advertisement for apprenticeship fairs, well, apprenticeship programs, and we wanted to give youth the exposures to different apprenticeship programs so they could get that hands-on experience and overall better equip youth for a variety of future opportunities. In doing so, we can utilize existing community connections. These programs have, while forming a long-lasting relationship with the city, we will also continue to develop apprenticeship opportunities offered by the city and have been in discussion with multiple departments. Some of our recommendations are more intentional advertisement as well as youth advisory board to strengthen relationships with schools and student groups for future youth advisory board events. Attendance at our opportunity fair was our biggest challenge. For this reason, more aggressive and intentional advertisement for the next event would be our first recommendation. For example, we can develop a greater partnership between schools and our PIO to have greater reach and impact. In addition, we will try to build partnerships with existing like-minded programs that focus on getting youth into apprenticeships. In doing so, we can utilize existing community connections these programs have while forming a long-lasting relationship with the city. We will also continue to develop apprenticeship opportunities offered by the city and have been in discussion with multiple departments. Next, I would like to welcome our Vice Chair, Natalia. Uh, to further on to discuss about this youth simulation, here are some pictures that we had of um, our board members speaking and having our tables of organizations we made up so that um, we could give our adults an experience of how frustrating it is when youth uh, try to access these resources, but they're not always available or there's certain barriers that can cause them to not gain them. And here are some youth simulation responses. Um, everyone who attended uh, loved it so much. They uh, had, had all of these comments, uh, great complex, complex layered role play. Youth board members were outstanding, very well run event. And, <laughs> excuse me, um, the adults were really surprised about how they were feeling after this event. They had a, we had a debrief discussion to talk about how they felt and how they didn't realize how frustrating it is for uh, youth when they access um, resources. An example is uh, that we gave them role plays. So they played like uh, a person that was of age of 15 with a name and we would give them bus tickets as well, <laughs> fake bus tickets, and we would like, uh, it would be, what's it called, like their ride to, their, to the tables that we have created of the organizations that help the youth. And sometimes we close our tables just to pretend because once, because we notice that the youth, when they get on buses, um, they don't get to places on time because it's not really, it's not in their control. So they're not able to get the resources that they need at all times. And so our goal was to establish an understanding of the barriers that impact youth from getting involved with the resources that are in our community. And we did this by having the different tables that uh, aided youth in providing roles for the adults as well. And then. We just want to say that uh, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive and we hope to do it again. And now I would like to invite Nanis to provide our clo closing remarks. Thank you. The 2023 to 2024 has been a phenomenal cycle and we are so proud to represent youth voice and youth perspective as well. We are, immersed, we are so grateful to all the city council and board members. This would not have been, all of our projects would not have been accomplished without the help of the community. I wanna take this time to say goodbye to our wonderful seniors, but to also reinforce the fact that we are going to continue to serve the youth of Des Moines. And we look forward to providing more opportunities for the betterment of youth. We are excited to create more opportunities to enlift and empower our youth. So the next step for us is coming back stronger, bolder, and ready to make an even greater impact. So thank you, board. And thank you guys as well. Thank you. How many seniors? Almost everybody. Almost everybody. <laughs> So now that you're all graduating, what is the next course to refill their board? Okay, I would like to welcome up my seniors to answer that question. 
I want to thank you for the time and commitment that all of you put in because it's not easy with all your other activities. So great presentation and we are in good hands with these young people. So at least half of our board was full of seniors and since we're all graduated, it is time for us to depart for our next journey. And in doing so, um, there was the common question of how are we going to fill those spots that are now empty. And one way is reaching out to schools, bringing the Des Moines Youth Advisory Board into schools to advocate for why students should join the board. Um, we're really looking at reaching out to the North, Lincoln, and East because we do have quite a bit of Roosevelt students. So just really getting our name out there, advertising more. And I'll let Natalia talk a little bit about it as well. And then once we get the attention of the youth members within these schools, we like to provide an application for them. So just uh, the basic questions, why you want to join this board, and an opportunity for them to write a couple of paragraphs so that we can, um, we see the application together as a board and we decide if we want this person to take our place or to add a new member on our board as well. Do you guys have any other questions? So you're all coming back, at, are you going to school out of Des Moines? Because if you are, you are you coming back, right? <laughs> After you get out of college? Or Majority of us are leaving Des Moines, unfortunately. So. For school? Yes. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you can't come back after school, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have some work to do. Huh? There is an age requirement. Um, is it to 20? No, just even to come back oh. and live. You don't yeah. have to be on your board. Oh. You know, we could. We yeah, can. Right. The age limit is 27. We'll, we'll be out of college by then. So I would hope so. Yes, we'll <laughs> consider it. <laughs> anyway, thank you all again for all the work. Does the council have any other comments? Uh, yeah, great presentation. And uh, thank you for lifting up your ideals and your goals and what we can do to make youth more uh, welcomed into this community and some of the issues you're facing. So it's great to have young people so engaged. <laughs> so again, good luck at school or whatever you're going to do, whether you go into the career or whatever. So good luck next fall. Thank you so much. And thank you again for having us all here. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's just a photo of the full board, Mayor <laughs> County. This was taken with Mayor County. He actually took the photo. so. Or he was he was there so looks like you were having a good time okay with that uh, we will reconvene for what time is our work we have a 3:30 closed session our regular meeting starts at 5 so uh, thank you all for being here and thank you for the information that was shared <laughs>